Hey everyone, today I'm going to be tying my new caddis dry fly pattern, the full freezer caddis. It's called a full freezer caddis because you need to harvest an elk, a deer, a turkey, a duck, and a chicken to get the materials you need. Of course, you can always head to your local fly tying shop and pick up the materials there. Here's everything you need to tie the green and tan versions I offer in my shop. They're available now for pickup if you want to go grab them and not tie them yourself. For dry fly hackle, for the green version, I'm using a whiting red label golden olive pelt. For the tan version, I'm using this whiting heritage pelt. This is a vermiculated dun color. The whiting heritage stuff is super cool and has some great colors and really enjoyed playing around with that uh, line of hackle. Of course, you can use whatever hackle you have on hand or you think would look good on the pattern. In the vise, I've got a folding mill 50-50 dry fly hook in size 12. We're going to be tying our materials in with Semperfly Classic Waxed A-Dot Thread. This is tan. As you see, I've started my thread about a hook eye length behind the eye itself. We want to avoid bulk up near the eye of the hook because the head's going to get pretty bulky. For a trailing chuck, I'm using some natural colored short fine deer hair and just taking a small clump like 10 to 12 fibers and stacking it in a hair stacker. You don't want long black tips for this tail so you want the short fine stuff. I'm going to use a pinch wrap and secure the fibers to the top of the hook. I'm going to crank down right at the back to get a slight splay but I'm going to take pretty much all the tension off the thread and bobbin as I kind of throw the bobbin forward to move the thread up the hook and secure the deer hair. I don't want to compress it down and lose the buoyancy in the hair itself so I'm trying to keep as much thread tension off the hair as we move it forward and we want a really clean point here like I said we want to avoid bulk so I try and rip the hair out and whatever's left over I'll clean up with scissors. For a body, I'm using a barred turkey biot. This is Calabatus colored from Nature Spirit. Again, I'm not taking connecting thread wraps and I'm using very loose thread tension because I don't want to compress that hair down. I'm just checking to make sure the biot's gonna palmer the correct way. Then I'm adding some super glue over the thread wraps. It will add some extra security to the kind of delicate turkey biot. Just gonna use a rotary function and make some connecting wraps forward. And as you can see, it's got a nice modeled segmented body using this particular product from Nature Spirit. I like it a lot. secure the material in place and then rip it off again trying to get that clean break. For a little bit of a thorax bump I'm using some UV brown ice stub and I'm just going to create a little dubbing ball. It'll help prop up the materials in front of it to make sure the wing is kind of staying off the body of the fly. For an underwing I'm using some Compare cow elk. I'm using about 8 to 10 fibers, stacking them up and using them to create an underwing. Again, I'm using the Compare cow elk hair because I want the short tips to get as much uh, floatiness out of the hollow hair fibers itself. I want to tie them in about the length to the bend of the hook. We don't want to go all the way through the trailing chuck here. This underwing will provide some modeling. For the wing itself, I'm going to be using three Caddis Dunn CDC feathers from Trout Hunter. Yes, Trout Hunter has some CDC back in stock. And I'd go check their site out and pick some up if you've been searching for it through their shortage. I'm going to tie in the wing about halfway through the trailing chuck, a little bit longer than the elk hair tips. I'm just kind of adjusting the length here. 
Again, you want to tie it in right up next to that dubbing ball so it'll pop itself up. And it's got a really cool look to the wing from below. So the fish get a really nice looking caddis wing. I'm gonna snip the feathers off close and then clean up that head a little bit by covering all of the spare fibers up with thread and creating a bit of a ramp. It's important to create an even ramp so your dry fly hackle will not slip forward on you. For dry fly hackle, like I said, I'm using this vermiculated done heritage hackle. Look at how cool that feather looks. It looks awesome wrapped around a hook. I'm just going to strip off a few fibers. Of course, tying in the feather with the shiny side pointed towards you. And then start wrapping. I want to make about five wraps or turns of hackle. On the size 12, I drop that down to four for the 14s and three to four on the 16s. And here I'm just trying to get as clean of wraps as I can. And I'm leaving myself enough room that I can tie off the feather and snip everything out and have a clean little dry fly head. There's a few, always going to be a few wayward fibers, so I'm going to go in there and try and clean them up as best I can. Probably doesn't matter, but you know, clean fly looks nice. I'm just going to go into a four or five turn whip finish. And that is our full freezer caddis. Nip off our thread. And still cleaning up a few fibers because. Clean flies are nice flies. Anyway, you can see how cool that wing looks from the fish's per perspective. It's got that modeling and kind of gives the impression of movement and modeling and just looks cool. Man, that dry fly hackle looks awesome. Here's a green version. Same tie-in procedure, just different colors. Anyways, like I said, they're available in my shop if you want them. So we've got a slick here with some fish rising in it. There's one on the far bank over there and a couple in the middle. Guess we'll try and put this long leader dry fly to use. we can make those casts. I have a caddis on, but they might be rising the PMDs. Okay, I'm gonna try and cheat one more step here. Try and target those in the middle. Wind's helping now. Yes! Came up for the caddis. That was awesome. It's a nice brown. Oh. Long leader dry flying. At least we got him out of the pod. That's on my prototype dry fly. Oh no, my net's all caught up, and that's bad news. It's a really solid brown, guys. Shows you the power of the long leader in this really calm water. On the prototype, too. Gotta love it. 
Man, that's awesome. No hesitation, just came over and slurped it. Caught him in midair. Nice. There you go. Now you can swim away. Yes! Dry fly. No, no. Can't let him get in there. Okay. That was kind of unexpected. Came out of nowhere. Beat the caddis. Oh. We're not in a good spot here. It's a nice brown. Nice brown. Yes. That's awesome. Ate my new caddis pattern. It's a solid one. Dry fly fish. <laughs> 